I've been experimenting with different ways to make custom circuits. Um, in the past, I've either just used a prototyping board, just soldered a bunch of wires in there. Looks pretty nasty, but usually I can get everything to work. So, I've been experimenting with different ways I can make a circuit board with the tools I have. Um, one thing I did get was a small hand engraver. Uh, in the past, I've, I've done some things like um, here where I've made this light for a, for a piano lamp I never finished, but the light works fine, where I actually just cut the circuit board on the scroll saw, kind of breaking up the, the circuits and cutting out small pieces with the exacto knife. Someday I'll publish a video on how I made this and the finished piano lamp, but anyway. So, in this test, I made a small circuit for flashing and testing with the ESP uh, A266-01 module. Uh, some people might think it's a bit on the limited side because it only has two GPOs you can do anything with. And even on those, you have to keep them high and power up. Or at least one of them you do to zero. But once you learn to use it with a I2C or I2C interface, you can actually control quite a bit with just a single module by itself. So anyway, I'm making a, uh, I'm going to try and make a small circuit. That's really just for that. It's going to have the module, a resistor to bring it live, and uh, the serial interface will be brought out a couple different ways here, and then the needed pins are brought out over here with power and ground for doing some testing fairly basic. Uh, my plan is I've attached the circuit to the board here. I'm going to cut it out. I made this template my 3D printer to drill the holes. So it's going to sit in the template. I'll drill the holes. Then I'll use the hand engraver to separate the circuit paths I need. We'll see how that goes. Now that it's cut down the size, it's a little snug. I had to sand the sides a little bit to get it to fit. One thing we want to make sure is when we put it in here, we're actually lining up the dots and the lines so that they line up with the holes. Well, and actually, I already stuck it in here once the wrong way. But I, but I realized that before going over to drill the holes. So I just kind of crammed it in here. There's just a little lip all the way around. That way it holds together. So now I'm just going to go to the drill press. I found a, a bit that seems to be a pretty good match for the hole size. That's what I'm going to use. Holes are drilled out. I'm going to just start. Not the first time I've tried this, so we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to start separating some of the, the bigger spaces. At, uh, some of these bigger general spots, but uh, we're going to start with this guy. I think the main reason I wanted the smaller tool is just because I thought I'd need the uh, greater control for the small stuff. Now I'm going to try my rotary tool with the, the, the uh, flexible cord takeoff. It's a little unruly compared to the other one, but I can put this other smaller bit in, uh, diamond bit, and uh, my power is going to be a lot better. So we'll try that. Okay, 
I'm not going to be able to manage that. Maybe if I can get the cord different. It also seems to have a fair amount of wobble in the spin. That could just be the bit too. Going back to the hand engraver, my uh, my Dremel was a little too unruly. Well, I didn't get new batteries. I just give the given the, the the hand tool a little rest in between. Grinding section seems to be enough to get by here. Alright, I have everything ground out. Kind of gone back and forth a couple times. The whole process took less than a half hour. Um, with practice and fresh batteries, probably could get it well under under that, but um, eh, for a first attempt, not too bad. Now, the uh, the paper on here, I stuck down with just, um, just uh, a glue stick, so I'm going to damp it slightly and it should all come off real nice. don't really want to get my surface wet, but, oops, well, there goes that. So, once it just soaks into the paper slightly, should come right off. Yep. I'll just kind of go over it again. You can see my paths. Basically, I just ground isolation paths. Um, I can see a couple spots where I have to touch up. That's expected. Well, that's much better. A little more touch up. Um, in the future, I might just get a rough, the rough lines in quicker with the paper, and then do the grinding without the paper because it all grinds and works, grinds off much better once the paper is removed. Um, I suppose I could have just drawn on with a sharpie where I wanted to cut my paths, looking at a, looking at a reference. And then uh, ground it off that way a lot easier. So, solder it up and test it out. Mm, so focus. So the circuit board's working quite nicely at this point. I have a little resistor to pull the ESP active, the socket. And there's the jumper to get the VCC over to the right pin. Now I just need to put in my uh, various headers here. All right, here we have the finished circuit. Everything soldered in nicely. The ESP just plugs right in. I currently have it loaded with uh, my marquee program that pulls and displays different temperatures and, st and uh, stats from my uh, Raspberry Pi. So, just a brief explanation. You know, I have the obviously the powers right the powers right here, plus and minus. Um, then we have uh, the two GPOs we can use brought out here, doing the IC I2C and power, of course. On this side we have the serial interface. Oh, also to flash it, we just need the jumper, which one ever, whichever one of those is GPO zero, which I should label, to uh, ground, power it up, and we can flash it then. I brought out the uh, serial port two different ways with the ground on each side. Uh, one matches up with my cable that I use for uh, doing 
Arduino uh, Pro Minis. But then if I pulled this off, it would match up with this. This way. Yeah, without the cable. And with the cable, it would just go here. Basically, the difference is uh, one pin different. So that just makes it more convenient for the uh, USB to serial interface I happen to have. Let's just power it up here and uh, show that it works. Okay. It's a little delay in the, uh, the routine to drive the display. We have to make sure that boots before we start doing that. Um, in the end, I would say this is a success. If I did it again, I would really just mark the paths with maybe a, a hobby knife then remove the paper and grind it off because grinding the uh, copper went way easier once the uh, once I didn't have the paper on there anymore but uh, just another way to make a PCB board thanks thanks for watching bye